lives. You've met with a solar consultant, you've signed the contract, you've made the decision to go solar. Nice job, we dig that. But what exactly happens next? We're gonna walk you through all the components and the process from the beginning of installation to the final system turn on. Enjoy these videos, and if you still have questions, please, just give us a call. We'd be glad to help. Your solar consultant has identified the best roof surface for your solar system. This is going to be the roof surface that gets the maximum sun exposure and the maximum electricity production. Since solar panels will continue to make electricity for decades, it's really important that your roof have at least 10 years of life left on it. Otherwise, you can incur extra costs later on, having to remove the panels and re-roof at that time. So play it smart, have our professional take a look to make sure that your roof has plenty of life left. These are your footings. Now along with the flashing, they create the attachment base for the racking of your system. These footings will go directly into your roof rafters. There's very little chance of leaking from these penetrations, but your installer should warranty your roof against leaking from the penetrations for five years. Any leaks that happen after that time are pretty unlikely that it came from the roof penetrations. These are flashings, and they'll be placed over the roof posts to create a barrier against leakage and the elements. This is your racking. Now, your solar panels will be attached and secured to this racking, and this is made out of very durable, resilient material like most of the other parts of your system. Um, you really won't see much of the racking because your panels will be placed on top. This is our inverter. Now, the inverters are really the brains of the system. They convert the DC power created by the solar panels into AC power, which we use in our homes. It also constantly checks the grid to make sure that it's okay to feed the power onto the grid. We do want to tell you about the two different types of inverter technologies available on the market. This is our traditional inverter. It's mounted near your main service panel. It feeds electricity into your panel for use. The good thing about a traditional inverter is they've been around forever. They get a long track record. They're proven. They're also less expensive than a microinverter. The challenge with traditional inverters is that traditional inverters require particular lengths of solar panels connected together called strings. Now, these strings always have to be on the same roof pitch and the same orientation or direction. Each traditional inverter brand requires different string sizes for each brand of solar panel. So if you have a tricky roof with multiple roof slopes and multiple directions, you can see this can get very complicated when designing your system. If your solar company is charging you for that design, it might actually be a better idea to go with a microinverter. So you can see, finding the right inverter, solar panels, and string sizing to match the size of the system you need can be a really tedious and time-consuming process. For that reason, it might be better to go with a microinverter. This is our second inverter technology. This is called a microinverter. Now, what's unique about a microinverter is that it actually attaches at the side of each panel rather than on the side of your home or your property, and it converts the DC power to AC power right at the site. This provides an incredible amount of flexibility because each solar panel is now its separate entity and can be at a different pitch and a different orientation and it wouldn't affect the array. Also, since stringing isn't necessary, it means if for some reason one panel is shaded during the day, it won't knock out the entire string of panels like in a traditional inverter system. Now the only downside to the microinverter is it's a relatively new technology so it doesn't have a lot of track record to go by. And this is your panel. Now panels vary a little bit in size based on the number of solar cells, the wattage, and the brand, but for the most part, they're nearly identical in composition and construction. The thing you want to be aware of is if you have limited roof space, you might require a higher powered, higher wattage, more expensive panel to compensate. You want to ask your installer if you have enough roof space for the traditional, less expensive panels, or if you might need to spend a little bit more for the higher powered, higher wattage panels to compensate for the lack of roof space. And finally, your AC disconnect, which will be mounted next to your main service panel and allows you to turn off the solar array during maintenance or in case of emergency. That was a lot of information, so let's do a quick review of the essential components of the system. The footing, which attaches to your roof rafters and forms the base for the racking. The flashing, which slides over the footings and creates a barrier against the elements. The racking, the attachment structure for your solar panels. The inverter, changes the direct current power to alternating current power for use in your home, the solar panel, the power generator of the system, and finally, the AC disconnect, the shutoff mechanism. 
So these are the main components or steps within your system. So now let's go check out the installation. People always ask me, where does all this electricity that my solar system produces go? Um, well, it goes right here and it feeds into your main service panel. So there's a few things that are important to know though. Um, the first is that for any solar system, uh, you will require at least a 200 amp electrical service. So if we look here, we have a 200 amp disconnect. This is sufficient. Um, if you have a larger than 8 kilowatt system, you may even need uh, a larger electrical service. If you have less than 200 amp service or you have an outdated or antiquated panel, you will incur a little bit of extra cost replacing that panel, making it sufficient for your solar system. Next, uh, many states, including California, have a system called net metering. And what net metering is, is your local utility will essentially create a credit debit account for your electricity usage. Uh, as your solar system produces electricity, you will feed the power onto the grid and your meter will run backwards. As you use power, you'll draw from the grid and your meter will reverse. At this time, most local utilities won't pay you for your extra production. So for that reason, we closely build your solar system to match your past electricity usage.